Hi everybody, it's Agnes and welcome to a very, very special YouTube today. I have asked a handful of people that I have had contact with, that I have had emails with, I've had face to face with, and the whole aim of getting us together here today is for them to share because they've had fabulous success with the journey of self-love, with applying certain techniques, law of attraction, Neville, all sorts of different things. And I wanted to get them in a group today so that they could share with you what's working for them and just that you can hear it in their own words. Some of them you will know from interviews and some of them you will know from the Q&A. So welcome everybody. Thank you for coming and joining me today. I'm really excited. Hello. 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 <laughs> hi. Hi. So hi. Hi, Agnes. Thank you. Hi, Agnes. Hi, everybody. Lovely. So today I had an email from Jennifer, and Jennifer, I thought we could start with you, what you shared with me, because it was wonderful. So let's unmute you, and then hello, Jennifer. Hi. So um, I went to a bookstore and was just looking around and I found this little book by, I'm probably going to botch the name, Thich Nhat Hanh. And, um, can you, it, can you, Jennifer, can you zoom it right in so we can see it? Can yeah. you see it? Um, lift it up a bit. <laughs> there we go. How to love. Yeah, we'll How to love. The, I'll put the you link down see. below. It's really, really sh small and the little segments are short. So I just decided because sometimes my days are pressed. I'm a nurse and I work 12 hour shifts. I don't yeah. have a whole lot of time Yeah. and I'm exhausted. So if I just have something real quick and little that I can read to just kind of uplift me and then go on about my day, yeah. <clears throat> I usually end up kind of mulling it over throughout the day and I've made little notes to myself about what it means to love and it's been a really great little journey so far. Beautiful. So the one day this just really spoke to me because I, especially when you're trying to figure out what does this self-love thing mean? Um, <laughs> yep. Um, he writes here and it's just a couple little sentences. True love is made of four elements, loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. If your love contains these elements, it will be healing and transforming. And it will have the element of holiness in it. True love has the power to heal and transform any situation and bring deep meaning into our lives. So if I don't apply that to myself first, then I can't attract anything, whether it be a relationship or a job or more money or, you know, anything. Yeah. And then he just goes on to describe each day, you know, what loving kindness is, what compassion is, what joy is, what equanimity is. And it's very, very simple things, um, building a home and by accepting yourself, um, compassion, understanding the suffering of yourself first and, and dealing with it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the capacity to offer joy, knowing how to offer joy. Um, and then equanimity, just um, realizing you are the other person and the other person is you. And um, when you realize that you can affect the other person by everyone as you pushed out, then you can offer love and happiness in a relationship rather than just worrying about yourself and mm. what am I getting out of this. Absolutely. So I just found it to be a good little quick read. It's simple and I just find a lot of piece in it yeah lovely i'll put the link down below for that because i you sent me a few bits and it was it was very good jennifer while i've got you yes. what do you yes. think has been the thing that's really helped you with feeling much better from where you were to where you are what would you say is the stuff that's really worked for you well number one thing is the whole pono pono prayer mm -hmm. um I've kind of memorized it. I don't always say it in the right order. I don't know if there is a right order. I think it's just more what you're believing and feeling when you're saying it. 
And um, anytime I feel, um, get those old feelings of insecurity or, or, oh, I'm alone or, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not loved. I just start saying that over and over and over. And, and it just brings peace. Yeah. I even call my own name out, which maybe sounds a little weird, but I'll be like, Jenny, you are love. Jenny, you, you know. Yep. And it just helps. Beautiful. You can do it on the fly when you're running down the hall, yeah. you know, at work or whatever. It's not like it takes, you don't have to go off to a secluded room, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can do it. I love it because you can do it with your eyes open. You don't have to exactly. be. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it distracts exactly. you from yes. all that repetitive, habitual, negative thinking yes. about whatever subject. It doesn't yes. matter what the subject is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it totally heals it and almost kind of like then just blocks it and just like binds it up and takes it away from you. And you sometimes you don't even remember what it was you were upset about. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. It's, um, it's, a, it's just a jewel, that prayer, forgiveness. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. I, I still use it every day. Still, still, still from the time I learned about it, because I learned about it in my coaching course in 2014, mm -hmm. I think. And I remember thinking... Mm -hmm what you know what is this you know at first you don't quite understand what why can that how can that work <laughs> exactly exactly yeah no it's brilliant it is yeah. brilliant. and you've had some wonderful manifestations i'm actually going to put your interview down below for those that, that have missed it because your mm -hmm. story is really you know you transformed in so many ways and it's a, a, a beautiful story so i will put it down below so, Jennifer, do you want to say anything else before we move on to the next person? Anything you want to bring forth? Well, um, you know, with my job in that success story, um, all of a sudden the hospital um, didn't quite have the need that they thought they were going to have. And so my contract actually got terminated. And, you know, six months ago, I guess, I would have been flipping my lid. I would have been just a ball of, I would have probably been in the hospital with anxiety. Drugs. Yeah. I yeah. would have just been crazy because I am very methodical about my job and having a, a good job and, and bringing in money and paying my bills. And I yep. would have just, well, I didn't flip. I was like, okay, you know what? There's something better then. And I just knew. And, and even though you're, you know, these thoughts tried to pop into my head, well, what about this? Well, what about this? And you're blah, blah, blah. And what, what, you're just not good enough or whatever. I'm like, no, I, I have a good job somewhere. It turns yeah. out I got an even better contract. I got more money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a completion bonus. Yeah. Um, they paid me my, um, the, the contract that I had that was canceled. They paid me. Yep. And I didn't work. And here's the interesting thing is a few weeks ago, I had been thinking, gosh, I haven't had just like a week or a week and a half off in a year, just where I didn't have to work at all or worry yeah. about it. And yeah. I was so tired and I just thought it would be so nice to just have a week off paid. Guess what? Anya? Yeah. I've had almost two weeks off paid now. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Let me ask you between the, um, in the, where they told you, uh -huh. sorry, we're letting you go. And because uh -huh. that would have come as probably a shock. What did you it do between that shock. and the next job? What did you do in between? Well, I decorated for Christmas because it's that time of year here yeah. in the States. And yeah. I've done a little shopping. I went out and bought myself a pretty new coat. Yeah. I've worked out. Yeah. I um, just had a good time. Talked to my mom and my kids. Yeah. And just just enjoyed myself every day. So do you weren't work like before you got the news that you got the second mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. did you did you do any law of attraction, oh. Neville, anything like that to to bring that in? Well, I just I just set an intention in my mind that I knew I was gonna have that everything was working out for me. Yes. Because I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't mouth off or be ugly or, you know, kill anybody. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew that I would be okay. I just right. knew. And I just, I just knew. And I mm -hmm. made a couple calls and I had a recruiter that was like, oh my gosh, yes, we want you. We want you. We want you. We want you. And he was <laughs> like, I'll get you this. I'll get you this. I'll get you this. And he did. And he, he got it all. Beautiful. So, when yeah. You, when you feel... 
worthy and worthy and deserving mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you feel loved and wanted i think mm-hmm. it it just so permeates all those areas of your life and that's such a great example because that wasn't long between you losing your job and you getting the next job how long was that no um i had another job within 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> That is yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jennifer. That's brilliant. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I, get, I get so inspired by, you know, I, I'm seeing more and more. Mm-hmm. I'm getting more and more inspired by all of you because you're, it's like you're going through deeper levels of application of this stuff and you're getting more and more results. And it's so exciting for me to watch. Mm-hmm. It's so exciting. I, I get so happy watching you and and just seeing you get relief <laughs> that's what it's all about so thank you jennifer thank you for sharing you're welcome you. you're welcome okay does anyone feel inspired to go next or should i pick someone if you feel inspired jump you know anias uh, sampada here if i can just speak a couple of words here yeah you know i think what i've realized uh, over the years uh, last two years right specifically that um, uh, you know self love or feeling loved is a is a choice it's not mm-hmm. uh, it's not a state anymore you know okay it can be the state can be induced by affirmations or by uh, you know different visualizations and meditations etc but it's really a choice that one is making and yeah. the choice is get, and the choice is you know to feel loved now moment yes. by moment yes and that's how it gets developed as a habit because you know when you are getting into the meditations or affirmations it's like a shot it's like a that therapy for that moment uh, when you again fall back to the older state you are again going to the meditation doing meditation for 10 minutes you are feeling loved again you fall back to the older state again you go back to meditation but when mm. you truly make it a choice yeah you know then that's a mm. choice that you are making so and uh, you know that's a that's a perspective i mean our own life is our own perspective that's how it is yeah happening mm-hmm. so uh, i think one should really take it as a choice like for example uh, i don't eat oily food that's a choice that i have made yep okay so similarly i think i have to be and ultimately uh, what i have realized is that all the teachings boil down to one thing which is consciousness so what is self love self love is nothing but being aware that you don't need to feel good by going to salons and spas or doing mm. shopping you know you have to feel good by accepting what you are so self love for me is is equal to self acceptance and that's a choice that i'm making lovely and i have to really make a choice as i said um, then of course what eckhart tolle says about power of now right it's all now it's only the present moment there is no past there is no future yeah. Uh, yeah. then it comes down to the parallel reality and the quantum bubble and the different states that we will talk about so uh, basically you have to get into a state and you have to choose that state forever and you have to be on that timeline forever there is no past there is no future it's only present now this second yeah and this fraction of a second so i think uh, one one starts with the self love and then of course by the time you make that progression and go towards quantum physics and the metaphysics i think you start realizing everything boils down to consciousness uh, consciousness of being love itself and not mm. feeling loved or anything but i am love and that's the consciousness that's the state that yeah. one has to you know get into yeah yeah i love how you i love how you said i am love now not tomorrow not in 20 minutes now i have to and really that's what it is isn't it it's, it's activating it yes. now i'm feeling i'm yes. feeling on love now i'm feeling on love now i've got to work on feeling loved now yes. it's that simple i love how you said that that's great it's i guess can i add something it's ildico yes ildico go ahead <laughs> jump in this was such an amazing point that um she just made because i think when people start on this journey and i was there myself they're like i don't understand i'm going out with friends i'm going to get my nails done i'm going shopping i'm doing all these things to show but it's like a cover yeah. right i think yeah. that is 
that's the most important thing to realize that it's not about that, but I don't mm -hmm. remember what interview you said it in, but it's sitting there in meditation when there is nothing else to distract mm -hmm. us saying, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. So it was just a funny example. Last night I went to get a massage and then, you know, I laid down on the table and my mind is going in a hundred different directions. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to think about anything. Like I don't, my mind doesn't have to work. And I think that's an example of self-love where I was able to tell my mind like, no, you get to take a break now. Yeah. I think that's an aha moment yes. for me. And also Absolutely. we never get there, right? It's not like, oh, today, I've, you know, I've, I've mastered self-love. I checked the box. You can always wobble. So I noticed yeah. that it was, you know, my first week starting a new job and I would wake up, you know, and I was exhausted. I just moved and it's like, oh, I don't really, you know, I don't have time right now or whatever. And it really doesn't take that much time to slip back into your old state. But I think the good mm -hmm. news is we can catch ourselves when we, when we slip yes. back faster. And also we realize that it's like going to the gym. I'm never going to stop going to the gym, you mm. know. It's something that is going to be for the rest of my life. But I think this is a really important distinction for people that it's not about doing all of those other things, but it really is coming from inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And Ildiko, you've got such a great story <laughs> like Jennifer, a great work story, which I interviewed you about. I'll put the link for that down below for those that mm -hmm. missed it. But I loved how the thing I loved about your story was the prepaving before you got the job and you knew you were starting an X amount of time and you started prepaving how things were going to go with your colleagues, how things were going to be. And you were already launching rather than doing revision, which is yeah. up things that go wrong. You were prepaving. So things didn't go wrong in the nice. first place. Exactly. I love that. I love that. Exactly. Yeah. That's brilliant. And after two and a half days, I'm like, you know, everything is great. The energy that I feel is just completely different than uh, my prior job that I kind of fled from. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just, you know, I just, um, you know, it wasn't a fit and now it's a fit. And I think that it's not an accident that my self-love improved yeah. when I found, <laughs> you know, when the job and I found one another. Um because it's like, you know, it's a, it's a better fit for me, but it's also because I, I feel like when I accepted all parts of myself, and yep. that is a form of self-love, a job came along that reflected all the best parts of me. So when you accept mm. all the parts of you that maybe you think are not acceptable, guess what happens? The outside reflects all the best parts of you. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And do you Can think... Can I add something, please? Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Um, so what I found, like Ildiko said, when you, when you're doing something with, so with me personally, I felt my foundation after being divorced. Um, so I got divorced after 18 years and I wanted the divorce for many, many years, but I didn't have the courage to do it because I didn't want to hurt my parents and being of, um, my parents were not used to actually, nobody in my family was divorced. They would support everybody around them, their friends, everyone. But as a cultural thing, they couldn't accept that, oh, my child got divorced. And I said to them, it's not, you know, it's not about the divorce. It's about happiness, about being compatible. But I couldn't apply that to my life because I, I had forgotten my self-worth. And I used to watch your videos on this and I would think, okay, why is this not working? Why is this not working? Like I would do your self-love meditation and it would work for those few hours, but I had to like convince my subconscious mind that there's nothing wrong with me. And I love myself because, mm -hmm. you know, I was always this happy-go-lucky person. I was a go-getter. And then seven years ago, I gave birth to a little girl that was normal and then she hit her head and we had disaster after disaster and eventually we found out that she's mildly autistic epileptic and i felt like a failure i felt what am, what have i done to deserve this what am i doing or blamed myself and when you're blaming yourself and the other thing was i was bullied as a little girl so if i had to train my subconscious mind that i am I am strong enough. And I watched one of your videos on this where you said um, you did it like 
a hundred times a day. And I thought, okay, let's try this. And I was walking in a mall and I started saying, I love myself and I had the counter and it was in my pocket because it was winter. And all of a sudden I started feeling better and I was smiling and I bumped into some friends and they're like, oh my God, you look so happy. How are you doing? And I said, I am happy. I'm so happy. And you know, it, it was my ex-husband and I get along. We are like good friends. We are good friends. And when I took out the counter from my pocket, I was like, oh my God, 2,000 times. And I was like, I'm this? Oh my God. Like, thank you, I'm I just, uh, Selma, your Wi-Fi is not working very well. Hang on, we're going to stop, stop. I can't mute Selma, it's not working. <laughs> I'm trying so that I can tell it. Selma, your Wi-Fi is not working, darling. Selma, your Wi-Fi is, cu your wi is cutting out. Yeah. I'll Selma, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, darling. I'll come back. <laughs> Don't you love live stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Enrique, let's pop in one of the men. <laughs> What's going okay. on? She's muted. Salma, I'll come back to you. Your Wi-Fi wasn't good for a minute. Just you get set up and I'll come back to you, darling. Enrique. Hey, hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, good to see you. Here, I'm wearing my special t-shirt for this session. Chill, God. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my message. <laughs> Chill out. Okay, bye. <laughs> that's beautiful. No, you, no, do you want to talk a bit? Do you want to say a few words? Yeah, sure. Um, I wrote down some, some things uh, I yeah. want to share. Um, beautiful. Well, uh, for the ones people know, know me, I've been working with Agnes for four months only. And it's been an amazing, an amazing journey. Um, I started, as most of you, because of a crisis. And, and, uh, and at the beginning, I contact Agnes and I started working on meditations. And, but uh, as I told her once, I, I I tried to cheat the system and, <laughs> and <laughs> because I started doing a lot of manifestation meditations and not enough self-love meditations, of course, didn't work. <laughs> so I, I found out like, like two months after that. But anyway, so I started, I started focusing on self-love meditation. Self-love meditations are the key it's amazing how they re really step little by little, they change your attitude, your life. Um, I, I, especially I love two meditations from Agnes. I would really recommend them. It's the, the gratitude meditation and the I love meditation. Those are beautiful and the, the, they sum up what, what it's, this is all about. Um, and uh, there's a, there's a, I wrote it down because I want, I want to repeat it. This, um, she said, Anya says in the I love meditation, says, the more peace I have, the more love I have, the more I enjoy the things, doing the things I do, the better I feel, the better I manifest. It's that simple. So uh, I just want to share that this is the most powerful, um, uh, this, the most powerful lines you can ever have this is all this is what it's all about um, in terms of meditations love yourself indulge yourself have fun with it um, I've been I, 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 I really changed my life when I started having fun with it I I, I um, let's say I indulge myself I watching movies reading a lot uh, going out and being sure that everything is all right and everything is going to be all right. But be certain to be that it's going to happen. It's, it's coming. 
So um, in, during the days, which, which is the most um, different, um, that's the hardest part because uh, when you meditate, you feel all, all right. Uh, but then during the day, negativity comes back. The, the things that have worked for me are the, the affirmations. I, I record myself. I, I play them in a loop. I play them with music as, um, because I love mixing music and, and stuff. And so I play them in the car all day, all day long. I love myself. The universe loves me. And all, all type of affirmations I, I want to, to affirm. And that have worked great for, and that has worked great, great for me. And um, and I started playing playing with little manifestations. I say so. I I, I started saying, okay, universe, if uh, is this going to happen? I want to see this such and such license plate, and then show up, so shows up in like in one hour. So it. it it's, and so I, I just have fun with it. I just, I just so it, it reassures you that everything is coming, and and you have fun, and you you enjoy enjoy the trip. As Abraham Hicks says, you have to love the journey. Yes. The, like she she said she said once uh, like if you're going to um, if you're going to uh, um, a not beautiful hotel or a beautiful resort during, during the weekend. And you're driving your car. You don't stop. You don't stop every ten minutes. You say, "Damn, I'm not there yet." And mm -hmm. you don't. You know you are getting there. So love the trip. Love the love the love the the road, and love everybody. And as I I agree with Jennifer, Honopono Pono mm -hmm. is amazing. It's it's probably the best. Um, Technique for for re relieve the, the pain. I did I did I did once. What I do, uh, I, of course, I I, I use onoponopono for uh, many people, but I also do it for situations and I, it worked for me. I want to share this with with everybody. Um, Try I, I what I do is I remember a, a situation that really 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 hurts. And but it hurts so bad that that hurts in the on your chest. So you embrace yourself, embrace with the pain, and and pray the onopono pono a hundred times and, until and imagine it, it it's like a drill, um, destroying all the negative uh, feeling. And there's an, another channel. Sorry, Agnes, I've been cheating on you. That's okay. You mention it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there's another channel. Uh, there's a there's a onopono prayer for eight hours. So ah, sleep, nice. with that, sleep with that. Sleep with that. Go to bed and go go fall asleep with that with that um, prayer. And it's amazing what it does for you. It's, it's uh, I can't stress that enough. Enrique, is it Jason Stevenson? Maybe. No, it's a it's a woman. Uh, I don't I don't recall the, her name. I, I'll write it. I, I'll send you an email send me the later on, so you can maybe. Yeah, I'll put the link down yes. below. It, it's a, it's faster. She she says it's uh, fa way faster than you. Um, it's not it's not for meditating. It's more like for listening on, on the on the on the go. Lake in the, on the yeah. on the okay. go. Yes. Okay. Great. So yes, that's that's about my story. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. That's the you're the the best man that's ever cheated on me, Enrique. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I come back. I come back to you anyway. <laughs> oh God, that made me laugh. Fantastic. Now, Selma, let's come back to you. Let's see if we can get hear you a bit better to finish your story. Selma. Oh, hang on, I gotta unmute you. No, I can't unmute you for some reason today. There we go. Okay, yes. there we go. <laughs> go That's ahead. That's so weird. That's much I think better. It's, it's storming outside, so if it gets cut uh, again, I'm really sorry, guys. No problem. 
Um, so I found after doing 2000 affirmations, yes. I, I could, it was weird. I mean, who does that? But I must be honest with you, it, it changed my nature, my personality. It's like this old Selma was back, this happy-go-lucky person that, I mean, I was never sad as a person. So this was just, it was weird. So anyway, I found that when I convinced my subconscious mind the way you had taught me, I did. Um, oh, the other thing I added is, I needed to add was, after that, I started one-on-one -on -one sessions. And you taught me to do uh, Huanapono. I can never pronounce it, please. I just can't. <laughs> no, you but, said it fine. <laughs> so after that, I found that as a person, I woke up happy every day. Uh -huh. And... Uh -huh. It changed my nature and my, my personality. It changed my relationship with my daughter. And you taught me that, you know, once you love yourself, nothing can bring you down. Nothing. So that foundation is like set for life and nothing can break you. And, and yes, I mean, on my gratitude list is thank you, God, for Agnes. Thank you, God, for Agnes. <laughs> you know you need somebody to guide you in life and mm -hmm. and i thank you for all your 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 videos that you you upload on youtube for yes. for everybody for for the for the mm -hmm. public who can't afford it i mean mm -hmm. if we didn't have that we would have never been where we are today and we would yeah. have never had these one one on ones with you so down to this my daughter is now verbal she can talk she can say mommy Oh, no. I love you. Oh. Come on, Zoom. <laughs> and, and, okay, we might have to hop. Selma, it's dropping out again, so we're going to have to hop to someone else. Sorry, lovey. I'll come back to you. Uh, let's go to Joe. Hello, everyone. Hello, um, hi. Um, just before I start, I'd like to say thanks to yourself for the opportunity to share. And also, I want to apologise in advance for my Scottish accent for those oh. that don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> love it, so, love um, it. Yeah, I know you love it. <laughs> I do. It's, it's just music to my ears. I love that accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. So, yeah. Um, I suppose for me, the journey started about a year ago, around about this time last year. And I think I've probably been through all stages. I, I came across your channel, I think it was in April though. So I've done a lot of stuff before then, a lot of looking and trying to find an answer and just didn't come across anything. And then I came across your channel and seen a lot of, as Enrique says, yes. uh, meditations for uh, SP. And I done the same as Enrique. I started off thinking, "Yeah, this is it. This is it," and ignored the self love. I think <laughs> everyone, I think everyone does that at, at some point or another. <laughs> so yeah, um, and then obviously I had sent you an email and realised at that point the foundation had to be self love. Um, follow on from that, I listened to a lot of Neville. I came across Neville online, mm -hmm. and obviously seeing you had made a lot of videos on Neville, the Neville Nugget series. I found is fantastic. And I've, I ended up buying um, an audio book of all his works. Mm. So I can listen to that on the way to work. Um, I've also downloaded a lot of tracks and Evo's speeches from YouTube. And I listen to them driving to work, driving home from work. Um, I listen to Evo at least, at least three hours a day. It's fascinating. Um, so yeah, for me, the main thing has been the self love meditations and... Neville has been inspirational. All his stories, in particular, the Power of Awareness book, mm. I think is incredible. Um, he does a lot of stuff on that. Um, all the success stories there, and they're all just simply fascinating. But they're all people who imagined it, believed it, felt it, and then received it. So it's, yeah, and it's just, I think self-love, though, self-love's crucial. Um, it's so important to get from a point. I think, as I said, I've come through all different stages where I've been really low, came through depression, came through counselling sessions because of depression, and then um, got to a stage where 
again, I was in my mind, all I was hearing was negativity of, oh, you're worthless, you've been rejected, all these things I think a lot of people hear. And then now the mind is telling me like, oh, you've come through this and you're doing fantastic. You know, you've, you're so loved, everyone loves you. Um, everyone wants to make time for you. Everyone thinks you're special. And when your mind flips to that, your whole perspective on life just changes. It absolutely just changes. And I suppose that in a sense is your consciousness creating your reality. Because if you're conscious of being loved, then it attracts it all in. So it's important not to, I find, not to neglect that self-love. Um, it's important not to neglect the, the techniques. When you neglect them, it's so easy to descend back into that trap of feeling low, feeling worthless. So I think it's really important to, to maintain that almost as a, it's like a healthy, it's like a healthy diet. Just yeah. maintaining that and keeping that up. So I've found um, by doing that on a daily basis, I maybe meditate about two hours a day. Um, I'll do about half an hour in the morning before work. I'll do at least half an hour at night before bed. And on lunch and work, I'll, I'll go into my car and I'll meditate for half an hour <laughs> at least. So, yeah, there's a lot of meditation in there. Beautiful. But I think um, for my job as well, it's very, it's very analytical. So there's a lot of thought process, a lot of problem solving, troubleshooting in my job. So my mind's constantly active. It's always at a high, you know, a high frequency. And sometimes it's easy for any thoughts to slip to slip in at that point, any negative thought. So the good thing is now that I'm in such a good place, the thoughts, while I'm highly active in the mind, they're all good thoughts. So it just increases it more and more and more and more. And one thing I've found as well is being aware of the thoughts as and when they come in. I think before, when you're, when you're at a really low place, you just allow the thoughts and you believe them and you don't try and control them mm. uh, or, or you resist them or you try and resist them. Um, but what I find now is when these thoughts come in, when you take that step back and you have that complete awareness of this thought doesn't serve me, I'm just going to let it pass. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think the yeah, I think the um, the awareness of thought as well is quite important. Instead of just allowing the thought, because the thought's not you. It's, it doesn't make up what you are. You are what you are, not your, not your thoughts or your body. It's what you believe to be true as your reality is what I've found. Cool. Good stuff. I, um, I could listen to you read the phone book. <laughs> oh, some people say I talk too much as well. That's quite ironic. No, no, I just this is <laughs> look. This is why partly I wanted to do this. We have got the USA here. We've got India here. We've got the UK here. We've got Costa Rica here. We've got South Africa here, and Scotland. <laughs> so we've got the United Nations here today. <laughs> That's so much fun as you get to hear all the accents and it's, it's just beautiful because it yeah. just shows that no matter where we are in the world, people struggle with the same stuff. Yeah, Male, absolutely. female, gay, straight, black, white, it doesn't matter. We all have things that we, you know, we want to love. We want to be happy. We want our friends and family to be happy. We want to have good income. We want to be free to do what we want to do. We all want the same thing. So I think to share this, uh, it's, it's, it really unites us when we do something like this to see yeah. that it is all over the world. And what's great, I just love knowing people read Neville all over the world, that people do Ho'oponopono all over the world, that people are doing the I love myself all over the world. I just think <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's really, Neville to me has been such an inspiration. It's uh, incredible yeah. to listen, to, to read, yeah. to listen. Everything in Neville's is just fantastic. Um, I was actually, I went yeah. in at work today to do a little bit over time and while I was catching up with some stuff I had um, a YouTube of the secret of imagining playing on my headset so yeah. I was doing my work and all it was going was Neville 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 it's just <laughs> it's unbelievable it's just all the stories are just fantastic they're, um, they're so so yeah. inspirational it's just ordinary people um, I mean the story of Barbados as well how we yeah. got to Barbados was just fantastic and I remember I've actually I've been doing a lot of stuff with my, my niece because she's been quite low as well, my oldest niece. 
she's came through a lot of stuff and um, I was showing her never and I showed her a couple of lectures and she actually she manifested um, her, she teaches a dance class here and she manifested um, the kids she changed her thoughts on the kids and she went and done dance classes and ever since then they've been fantastic she told me, she said, I want um, all, none of the kids listen to me. It's just they turn up and they don't care. And I says, well, go to bed every night imagining that the class went well. Just yeah. have a scene in your mind that the class went well and feel how good the class was. And then the f- three days later, the next class, she, she called me after it saying, oh, I don't believe it. You, you'll never believe this. Everything <laughs> I imagined came true. It felt amazing. And I was like, wow, fantastic. <laughs> Proof that it works. Yeah, Proof that it works. Um, I, and it's, it's and you paid incredible. it forward. You paid it forward too, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it was it was amazing. But yeah, she's she's really into it as well. So and it's it's really helped her. I think I find that whoever I can help, I thought this video in particular was a fantastic idea because whoever I can help along the way, especially yeah. with the stuff I've came through, I yeah. think it's so important and it's so crucial that we don't neglect of ourselves in the process nothing nothing that we want is on the outside I believe I believe it's all internal it's yeah. all internal we can have anything we want as long as we have it inside yeah and I think it's so so important which was the story about the Wizard of Oz that was yes. what the message was of that story absolutely yeah and that's so true and you don't think that <laughs> when you're a kid watching it you're just like oh I know it's a thin man about the law of attraction, you realize what that story was really saying. And that was actually the story that um, inspired me to write my second book, Emerald City, because it was, you had it all, you had it all along. That's what they say in that story. You had it all along. You came thinking you were going to the wizard to get something. You developed it and you had it all along. I just think that is such a profound message in that story. Yeah. One thing I I think there's a lot of movies I find that there's a lot of links to love attraction. And one in yeah. particular, um, I, I, I really connected with it recently. It was um, Bruce Almighty when he okay. becomes when he becomes God. Yeah. Um, and he's got to, he try and grant everyone's prayers, but then it gets too much for him. And at the end, he, he surrenders, and the actual God says to him, "Right, what is it you really want?" And he says his, his ex girlfriend at the time's name. And he says, what, you want her back? And he says, no, I want her to be happy. And then as it goes on, he gets into that place and obviously ends up back with his ex. And it's incredible. Mm -hmm. But that scene in particular is, it's unbelievable. It's just of a point where I don't want the material, I want their happiness more than anything else. Yeah. And And also in that, in that example, the person chose unconditional love over what they wanted, which in the end, I just think that's such a great moment. Such a Absolutely, great. and that's uh, the, the video I think you made of my request as well is very, you know, it's on that topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's so true. You get to a point where you think, you know what, I, I trust the universe, but I know if, if I feel this, then I attract this, and I'm just going to love that person. I'm just going to love everything about them, and that's it. That's all I need. That's all I need. It's not. I know what I consciously want, but that's all I need. Yeah. But everything you need is inside. I don't believe it's external. Beautiful. Oh, nice one, Joe. Had enough of the accent. <laughs> I might, you know what I might do? I get you to do a record a meditation for me. It'll only take a minute. It'll send you to sleep. I'm sure it'll send you to sleep. If you have, yeah, if you're having trouble sleeping, just give me a shout. I'll okay. send one down. We'll do a live <laughs> Live meditation at sleep time. <laughs> yeah, that, that won't take long, about a minute, maybe two. <laughs> oh, thank uh, brilliant. You. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. That's thank you. Lovely. Um, Selma, I'm going to come back to you one more time so you can finish your story, my lovely. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, hang on, Selma, you're muted. Just unmute yourself because uh, I can't unmute you today. There we go. So I would actually like to give the others a chance because it was more about the affirmations and... Yeah, I but did you want to just finish what you were saying? Because we've got like, do you want to just finish what you were saying about your daughter? Because you got halfway and then it, it, the, it distorted. So, Okay, so I remember you telling me a story about Neville with this little girl that wasn't normal oh. and her mom changed yes. her mindset. Mm-hmm. And I changed my mindset and I kept saying to my daughter, you know, it doesn't matter if you can't speak, if you're not going to be normal, 
I'm still going to love you, but you are normal and there's nothing wrong with you. And Agnes, she is flourishing. She beautiful. So I think it's all going to do with your foundation, which is your self-love, accepting yourself, loving mm -hmm. yourself, respecting yourself. And your, your confidence level changes too once, once yeah. you love yourself and accept yourself. But I think, you know, each one of you in this group have used different techniques. Selma, the one, the technique that, that stands out for you is affirmations. Yes. You have done affirmations more than any person I know on the planet. Yes. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I was, I was rock, this is rock bottom and I was here. So, <laughs> It changed my life around, honestly. Yeah, yeah. But I remember you, I said to you one day, how do you know you've done that? You've done that many affirmations. You said, oh, I've got this counter. And I went, what? Because I'd never heard of that. So you've actually, you sharing that with me was mean that I could share it with the viewers. And now lots of people have got those little counters. So it's helped people to keep track. Because the thing is, when you sew down and up, your, your conscious mind actually convinces your subconscious mind that you're not good enough yeah so say mm -hmm. a thousand times a day or two thousand times a day initially i mean afterwards you're only gonna have to say it a hundred times a day and you're fine or even ten times yes, yeah i love myself yeah you know, that's yeah. the way right now in my life i actually don't have time to say affirmations but i know that i love myself and and it remains consistent beautiful so, thank you anis that helped thank me you. a lot thank you and good to see you <laughs> Nice to see you. We'll chat again after. Okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, lovely, lovely. Now, does anybody feel inspired? And Kita, you've got your hand up. You go next, my lovely. <clears throat> Just unmute yourself and Kita. I think I've ticked, I've muted you by accident. There we go. Yep. Hello. I hope I, I'm audible now. Yep. Uh, first of all, sorry to the people for my Indian English accent. I'm really sorry. No problem. I hope, I hope you can understand me. So um, thank you very much, Anias, for this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, that too on YouTube. And, uh, you know, you have been knowing me since a long time. Um, it's been 16 months with you. Yeah. Um, and even though I knew your channel from January 2017, I started doing it from August last year. So it's been a wonderful journey. Just wanted to add something to everyone who ever talked about self-love today. I think I understood why you used to say that love is not over there. Love is over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of us, we are trying to get love from outside. Mm -hmm. So I, I, have, I have noticed this like um, during many interactions with people that, you know, uh, we are searching for love outside. So that, that's the thing that changed within me. So I found love within me first when I did the self-love. And I think the shift has been from the ego, the mental plane to the spiritual plane. So I got connected to the inner God, the God within. And, you know, understanding Neville has become very easy because Neville says that God is our wonderful human imagination. So I think you were really right when you said that um, it matters what you are because that, that is what goes out and then it comes back to you. So right now, after doing self-love all this while, I feel that I don't look for love outside, but I give it. So I'm in the giving mode and I'm, I'm feeling unconditional for myself and for others. And... It, it can only happen when we are in that loving state. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Ankita, can I ask you, how do you practice that? What's your favorite ways of getting into that state? I think in the morning, it's the best time to get up and then, you know, uh, start the meditations. So at that time, when I'm not even cracked, and the best thing which happened with me right now is working as a freelancer. Yeah. which I always wanted to do. And I left my nine to six and uh, now I have the freedom to, uh, you know, choose the time for myself. So um, this is a commitment that I made to myself. So it started with a commitment um, that I need to change myself, some things which are not working. So with that, I made a commitment to do the, I, I love myself meditation, means the self-love meditations. 
Yeah. And um, then I take care of my thoughts all over the day because I think I was missing this whole thing um, till one point that I was doing all the meditations. I am first best and they were giving me results till one point. But when I stopped, you know, when I, when I complimented it all with my self-talk, it made sense to me. So I think this is a very important point for many of us. Um, and if some of my friends are watching this, they would be knowing that what I'm talking about. Uh, we do many meditations, but we have to complement those meditations but by doing affirmations or those kind of loving self-talks for ourselves and for others. Yeah. So um, I don't know what you would be saying about that, but I, I found it really, I mean, yeah. um, working for me. I mean, uh, you know, uh, recently what I saw was um, with my very close relative, uh, things uh, started changing when I changed my self-talk. So things were very nasty and they were really going off the hook and many things happened. But then I stopped and I said, why is this happening to me? And I did my Honoponopono prayer. And then I started understanding that it was me that was pushing this out. And this realization is, I think, the gift of self-love because mm -hmm. I have become very compassionate. So self-love, I think, this is why you are saying that self-love is the foundation. Because if, if I don't feel love, so I felt, I asked myself at that moment of conflict, what am I feeling right now? What is the feeling which is going on? And I found I was feeling very unloved and unworthy. So I said, okay, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this within me. I'm going to feel I'm loved. I take this decision. I, I make this commitment to tell this over and over and do these meditations until my feelings level out. I feel balance and I feel that, okay, I'm in a proper way to respond. When I'm feeling good, only then I will respond, not before that. And yeah. this, I think, made a huge difference. And then the other person responded in a very loving manner. Everything mm -hmm. changed within minutes. Wow. I was like, this person I know for over two decades and they never changed like this. Wow. I mean, this was, this was heights. I mean, this couldn't happen. I was like, <laughs> I don't believe this. Yeah. This is really happening, you know. So, that's like, and Keita, that's like the mental diets with the girl and her boss, the Neville story. Yes. That, yes. Like a, a fast example of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't expect that things will change this way. So I said, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. Because at that point of conflict, what you want to think as a natural person, and you know, as a normal person, that you want to argue in your head. But instead of arguing, I said, you know what, leave it. I'm just going to do I'm loved because that is what I'm feeling. I want to change my feeling state within. Yeah. So I, I kept on doing that. I'm loved. I'm loved. I'm loved. I'm loved mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the person just came to me with a bowl of fruits. I mean, out of nowhere, this gesture. <laughs> and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> just a few minutes back, we were fighting. Yeah. <laughs> nice work. Yeah. Wow. So... I think we, we, we really can make use of self-love when we understand ourselves and we do understand ourselves over time that, you know, we don't have to take everything personally and we need to love ourselves and accept ourselves first. And then it goes out. So uh, for me to digest your videos, I think this was the time, the breakthrough <laughs> that I really understood like what you meant with uh, love is not over there and love is over here. You, you change this, delete the problem within you. Yeah. And then it goes and sticks out and then it comes back. So, Wow. Nice and example. Nice example. Also, um, this, is, this is also mentioned in Neville's book, uh, Power mm -hmm. of Awareness. And uh, this has been, uh, the first three chapters are very, very, uh, you know, inspiring to me. The I am, then consciousness is the only reality. And then, uh, you know, the assumption, assumptions that we make about ourselves and others. So yeah. basically why we are doing this work is because we had had many negative assumptions about ourselves. Uh -huh. So, so we are changing those assumptions and there had been many, many times that we felt unloved. And we are changing that. I, I remember you telling me and on, in your videos that, you know, for you, it was unloved as well. And you changed it with I'm loved. 
yeah yeah and and i still do it today like you did in that you know because you something happens and you get oof, you get that emotional you know something happens and you go hang on a minute and then you've got to keep it's like you got to surrender let go and and talk yourself down Mm -hmm. so yes. it's still 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 every day you know i mean not every day because i often i'm in my own little nest in london and i don't see a lot of people here except for people on skype but when you go out into the world or when you meet you know a specific person or a brother or a sister or your mum or your dad or someone who can ee, push your button <laughs> it's a good opportunity to practice it so i thought this time okay i did so much self love and meditation so why not put it to test as neville says test him and see yeah so i did that in in application so i was like i learned a lot now let's practice so pre previously my behavior before doing self love was flight or you know flight yeah. mode like if if yeah. some conflict is happening i'll just go away from that place mm. uh, and i'll not take responsibility of what is happening within me and mm. i would just escape Yep. Now it is like I take 100% responsibility of how I feel and I'm not going to let that affect my mood. Mm. Of course mood is going to be affected for a few minutes and hours but then that is the work I do the hard work you know just saying something which cools me down and then look at the better perspective of the other person being yeah. compassionate and then coming back to self love because self love meditations i think they level out my emotions when when yeah. i feel very angry and something yeah. so I, i i try to come back to the normal place yeah. so nice and also the second thing that helped me after that was understanding uh, you know this went hand in hand assumptions and self love and also after that uh, living in the end yes. so like we have this um, expectations that you know uh, the things should come from outside why is it not happening why am i waiting mm -hmm. so i understood there's nothing to wait about yeah actually if we are waiting we are in the state of lack yep we are not in the state of abundance so yep. what we want is actually not the car not the house not the person not anything else we want to feel that first for ourselves yeah. and then if it comes it's like a cherry on top of that cake so yeah 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 living in the end yeah. yeah abraham hicks talks a lot about that you it, it's yes. not the things you want it's the happiness you want the freedom you want the this you want if you can just take a back, go in the back door and do those things first those things come yep, yep. yes hmm. because that's a perfect match to what is going on within you oh. so i'm i'm just trying not trying i'm i'm like going with the flow with that alignment like the joy the peace so my first priority is peace i ask myself whether i am in peace right yeah. now am i am i really feeling loved if i am not then that's my responsibility to change that within me and then i i really don't care nowadays i mean if that is coming or not because i know there is something working beyond my comprehension mm. to bring that to me so yeah. the best part was surrender and letting go when things really get you know tightened and stuff and yeah. i keep expecting so because that has been a behavioral pattern so you know uh, when neville talks about going from the old man to new man how to sustain that new man the new woman yes. per se yes so you sustain that by reminding yourself that you don't have to do all the job you just have to be in that state feel that wish fulfilled and that's just let it go and yeah. not plunge onto it and say why is it not coming and why am i waiting and stuff you know yeah for sure yeah it's letting go of how it's going to happen when it's going to happen that's not our business mm so i had a major shift in my learning this time in four months last four months because i had really applied whatever i learned so all this while i was learning learning listening 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 yeah and now I was like let's do that in the real life. Let's just yeah. see how how it works. Beautiful. No, nice. thank you so much for Thank you for sharing and Kita. Appreciate that. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to Ildiko, you're going to be next and then um Martina and Humphrey will hear from you after that. Ildiko, go ahead. You got your hand up. 
Yes, mine is just really quick. So, you know, yeah. we talked about that subconscious uh, voice that says we're not good enough. Yep. What has also helped for me is to view that subconscious voice as my inner child. The inner yes. child who's scared and who is um, trying to protect you from, you know, failure or hurt or whatever. So yep. I think the only reason I wanted to express that is that worked for me is to embrace that rather than try to stuff it down or tell that inner voice it's wrong. Yes. Viewing it as the inner yes. child you know, saying you serve me, you're here to, you know, I know yes. you're trying to protect me. I appreciate everything you're trying mm -hmm. to do, but I'm the adult in charge now. Yeah. And that, that has kind mm -hmm. of, that has helped because along with the, your self-love meditations, a lot of inner child work, I think has mm -hmm. been really the thing that has helped yeah. me, help me personally as well. Yeah. yeah. That Dr. Hugh Len in a child meditation, it's so short, but boy, it just, it's so <laughs> effective. It's a brilliant one. I'll put that one down below too for people that haven't seen it, but wow, it just cleans out so many old yeah. parts of your childhood that <laughs> you're still acting from. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah, so that was it. Thanks, Ildiko. Thank you. Martina. Hello. Hello, my lovely. Hi everyone. Um, I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit low because I have pneumonia. Oh, okay. I don't know how that happened. I just got diagnosed with slight pneumonia on Wednesday. So, like, my SP and my sister, who was yelling at me the whole time we went to the ER, was <laughs> like, they had to force me to go because I came home from work sick. And you know, my sister's a nurse, and instead of her, you know, comforting me, she's yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, um, nurses aren't sympathetic to their family. You've got the, you've got the nurse next to you there, Martina. <laughs> yeah, she kept calling me stupid. What are you doing? Go to the ER. Uh, so, there's nothing yeah. like siblings. Nothing like siblings. <laughs> And then she got my other sister on the phone calling me stupid too. And then my mom's yelling in the background saying, Oh, my oh, God. Like you people. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, I have on my self love shirt. Oh, let's see. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> nice. Woohoo. You and Enrique both wore your special shirts today. <laughs> nice. Love it. So, um, what I basically wanted to say, um, since I've been working with you for like a year and then, you know, my whole story, my SP coming back, self-love is like the number one thing. And I think like since we were born and since like we grew up, we always look to other people to tell us if something's wrong with us or, you know, and then as I got older, I saw that, you know, I didn't know that it was, that's not a self-loving thing to do because you never know how somebody feels about you. So you're going to ask somebody, oh, you know, how am I this or that? They could say, you know, you're a piece of crap. So, and then you're like, oh, I'm really like that. And it could be from an adult. So like how everyone was saying about the inner child, like adults don't know how important that is to really uplift their children because their children can become broken adults. And I thought like I had self-love and stuff. I was like, oh, I'm not acting out like these other kids. and stuff like that so I do love myself but not to a point where I was like oh um you know like catching myself like if I would say oh if I thought something bad about myself I would still think about that and say oh I am like that but that's not a self-loving thing to do so when it comes in terms of like attracting a um, specific person we put them on such a high pedestal yeah. And we lower ourselves, like we don't really see that we're doing that. So we have to say, okay, like, why am I feeling this way? So, you know, I did the whole like, oh, attracting your SP back, and I didn't even look at self love. And then I realized that, hey, I need to like really feel happy with myself, feel that I'm loved. So, um, in the beginning, when I first started working with you, you know, I did the emails and stuff, and then affirmations really helped um i use your affirmations like did the meditations and stuff like that um i also realized that there was stuff in the past that i had to heal myself from so that's why you know i had like so much anger and i think that's the thing too like having anger isn't a self-loving thing to have 
because if more of your days are spent being angry than happy, then there's no balance and you can't, you know, think mm. that oh, you can attract like love, money, whatever you want into your life because that's a block. And like when the people like email me about their SPs and stuff, all I hear is like anger. And I'm like, you're not getting nothing with your anger with these people. Mm. You know, angry. Like he did this, I'm this. I'm like, look, you yeah. have a choice. You could attract them back. Or you could fix yourself. Because I had said I had to heal from myself, you know, things in the past. And now they have to realize that once you attract something in your life, like say an SP, it's a completely different relationship. Just like my relationship with my SP now. He's talking yeah. about marriage and all this stuff. I'm stuck with him for the rest of my life. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, give me a choice. You know, so they don't realize that. Like they think, once they get back together, it's, it's going to be easy. It's not easy. It's a completely different thing. Just like if you want, want to attract money, you know, you have to become like your best version, you know, and that's what I was feeling like I wasn't my best, best version. You know, I was listening to like what other people were saying about me. And like now, you know, I know that I'm a great person. I have a loving heart. You know, I'm kind. I only want the best for people. And if somebody has a problem with me, then that's their damn problem. It's not my problem. You know, we all have to, like, love ourselves, like, in terms of self-care, like, taking care of our health, mm -hmm. doing what makes us happy. You know, I'm sorry for my voice. Um, and what else? Just, just, just loving. People don't understand that when you say things, it's energy. So I've noticed that since this year, anytime, like, I speak something, I see it come in the past. So it's kind of scary. So now I'm like, like if I make a mistake at work, I might feel like stupid or whatever. But then I'm like, no, why the hell are you saying this about yourself? You're not stupid. You know, mm -hmm. that's energy and you, you don't want to project that out. Yeah. And, then, you know, it's like people don't understand like self-love, self-love, self-love is like the magnet that attracts everything. Mm -hmm. you know, it attracts love. It attracts money. Mm -hmm. It attracts you know, whatever you want to manifest. And, you know, I do go through my ups and downs with like how I feel. And, you know, with contrast, sometimes like I'm still waiting to be transferred to my other group. I'm like, come the hell on. But it's like, I know I'm getting there. Like, I'm trying to enjoy the progress. And I remind myself of, oh, you know, remember last year you weren't with your SP and yep. it was painful. Now you could incorporate that into you going to, um, you know, your journey into transferring over to your other group. So I'm just like, you know, I, I have to stop allowing contrast. And like, every time I have like a, a negative feeling, I think of why you think in that way, that's not self-loving, you know, um, why are you feeling this way? Why are you putting meaning to things that are neutral, you know, and then it just makes you feel like, better about yourself because I hear like some people even on the Q and A and even when they email me it's so much desperation, so much anguish. And I just tell them life isn't meant to be hard. You know, it's your choice. You want to have a, a hard life or an easy life. So, you know, and happiness is a choice too. It doesn't happen by chance. I choose to be happy. You know. And because I'm somewhere I don't want to be, that's not going to cause me to not be happy in my life, you know? So even the whole thing that happened with my cat in April, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, because that happened to him, you know, I'm going to stop my life or that's going to make me like a sad person. You know, we're going to go through things that might say, oh no, like bad things, but that shouldn't take away our happiness. You know, mm -hmm. it's just there because that's how life is, you know, unless you know you attracted that. But sometimes, you know, things just happen. And then the whole thing with the SPs, like everybody like that I talk to, they're always saying, oh, you know, they're happy if they're there. They're not happy if they're not there. Mm -hmm. My happiness doesn't depend on anybody, any circumstance, anything. So they like you know, they just think that, oh, 
I have to be sad in order to attract something back or I have to humble myself. And I'm like, you're, you're not supposed to do that because how are you supposed to live your life? We're here for like, like a candle in the wind, like Elton John's song. Yeah. You know, if you look at it, you know, I'm already 37. I'm like, where the hell did the time go? Yeah. You know, so it's like, I always make sure that I'm doing something that, um, that's self-loving. So like every night before I go to sleep, like I listen to your, um, your meditations. I still do, do that. And then in the morning when I get ready, um, I have something on my mirror. It's like an um, a affirmation of self-love. Um, it says, I love you. You are absolutely eternally wonderful and worthy of great things. You are desirable, competent, and powerful. You are first best. You are loved. Um, you are appreciated. All that stuff. So, yes, you are. Nice so, one, Martina. That's beautiful. So it's been a while since I... Um, so far, Martina. <laughs> things. It's been a while since I listened to myself on the... Um, on my affirmations or on the tape. So, um, you know, it, that helps too. Like if you record yourself saying, I, you know, you are loved. Cause I know with each affirmation, I picked the top 15 and I said it like 300 times and I recorded myself. So this was like in the beginning of my journey where I didn't really feel, you know, loved and stuff like that. So, um, you know, once I did all that, um, I started feeling, you know, things started happening. Like my SP started coming back. Once I started feeling, you know, self-love and, you know, things just started rolling. I'm not using him as like, oh, now my life is great because he's back. You know, he could be gone and my life could still be great regardless of, you know, what's going on or what's not. But I just want, you know, everyone who's like watching this on YouTube to like really know that you are loved you know you're here for a purpose damn if somebody don't want to be bothered with you that's their problem like right now you have to take care of yourself everything is like energy whatever you know you could put out like what happened to me sometimes like i can put out good energy and then somebody is still act like an ass to me you know that still doesn't make me feel like oh i'm not good enough for it's it's them whatever's up their ass is whatever i'm sorry from Kristen, but you know that's how you feel you know whatever bit them whatever you're not gonna determine my happiness so you know it's it's it took a long time for me to feel that way because i used to care about what people said about me you know and how i looked or whatever i don't care so you know as long as i'm loving myself and taking care of myself you know despite having pneumonia and sounding like crap, but you know, it's, <laughs> your light's still shining bright. My lovely. Your light yeah. Still I still love myself. Bright. I'm not going to like stand outside in 37 degree weather and like walk in my shorts. You know, that's not <laughs> good. You know, so yeah. you have to love yourself. You know, you can't have anybody else dictate who you are. You yeah. know, God made you for a purpose. Hell with anybody else. You know, as long as you're not out here, you know, hurting people, putting people down. Because, and I also say, like, how do people who deliberately do bad things to people, they think they're great. So, to me, that's kind of like, that, that doesn't fit. And then you're here, you're special, you're a great person, and you don't feel good about yourself. And that's kind of, that's not right. So, if somebody bad could feel good about themselves, that somebody good should definitely feel great about themselves. So that's how I like to think of things. And I make sure I stay on the path. Like if I feel as though I'm not doing something self-loving, I have to ask myself a question, you know, um, why are you feeling this way? Do something that shows your self-love. I can't go to the gym because I'm sick. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the self-loving things I was going to do, but I can't till I get better. But you know, that's all I had to say. Sorry about the frog voice. I don't know how I got this pneumonia. It's New Jersey weather. That's all right. I hate it. I, you do another 500, I am healthy and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to imagine it for you. We're going to imagine it for you.
Beautiful, thank Martina, thank you. And thanks for coming, even though you're not feeling great. Mm -hmm. So that's lovely. Humphrey, where are you? Hello, hello, Agnes. Hello. Um, and hello, everyone. Uh, well, first of all, thanks very much for the invitation. Um, uh, I just wanted to say, Martina, it was a great, uh, great story, uh, fantastic energy. I must say, I enjoyed um, um, our Q and A session a couple of weeks ago when you were telling uh, your story. It was just uh, amazing. Congratulations! And uh, well, keep up uh, with the good work. But um, um, if if I was to to say, in, in obviously, um, short um, short version of my story, I pretty much started out the same as everyone. Um, I was I was really in a, in a very low place, not loving myself. Things have uh, gone very well, sort of very bad with, with my specific person, etc. Et and I started searching for, for ways um, to to get her back, and uh, and it, it just seemed like I was um, I was fooling myself. Basically, it was all so superficial. I was I was only focused about uh, on on getting her back, getting, 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 and getting, and I was like, yeah, and it just obviously didn't work. <laughs> and I think the biggest breakthrough was to me was when I um, when I contacted Agnes, um, when we spoke for the first time, Agnes, I got to realize that well, I actually, you know, there is something to to this whole concept of me pushed out and I slowly started understanding it and started understanding that you know if I don't love myself you know how can I expect someone else to, to love me back you know you can't you can't um, simply put all that heavy burden on on your specific person demanding um, from them to, to love you because no one will take it and and you know that's exactly what happened um, me, I think, um, I think we need to take conscious choices. And to me, particularly, things started changing when I um, when I made some conscious choices about about uh, changing my attitude, my um, my um, view um, on the world and and on life in general. Hope upon upon us, as, as with most of you guys, helped me a lot. And, and discovering Neville, um, discovering um, um, Wayne Dyer's the meditation. I mean, it all started with you, Anya. I must say, got to give you, got to give you the, the credits here. <laughs> but obviously, you know, we've been all talking about all different, different sources, different, um, you know, uh, philosophies. Um, I think I've gone a little bit farther with my research than, or maybe not farther, but in slightly different direction than, than most of people, though, because um, um, I'm fairly um, um, analytical uh, person. You know, I, I really have this need to understand everything. Whenever I do something, I need to know why. I mean, that, that was actually one of the reasons why I was holding myself back for so long after things had gone um, wrong with my specific person because I was trying to understand what happened and there was nothing to understand other than you know uh, a huge part of part of the uh, what happened was was you know me pushed out my insecurities my lack of self-love etc et et but I was trying to you know uh, kind of um, uh, you know, deconstruct the whole situation and understand it at all costs. So, uh, I, I was finding it a little bit difficult at, at the beginning to, to believe, you know, just, you know, just believe, oh, love, and love of attraction, you know, it works like that. But then I started searching and I've actually discovered that, uh, you know, there's actually plenty of, uh, plenty of evidence out there that confirm all the theories, all the teachings of Neville, all the, uh, you know, me pushed out um, assumptions, etc, etc. 
uh, scientists have only just been, you know, discovering what all the ancient, ancient cultures have been teaching us for, for thousands of years. You know, we in the Western world, we, we seem to have forgotten all this uh, ancient knowledge. But, but, you know, what, what quantum physicists are discovering right now, you know, all these things that I don't even understand, but, you know, they start convincing. It all makes so much sense. You know, it doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't have to be either science or belief, either mm -hmm. you know, religion or uh, you know scientific um, and experimental approach. No, I, I think they all go together perfectly, and they can be uh, you know they can be uh, joined into uh, you know one coherent theory. It's just you know. They, they approach the same subject only from different points of view. It's, you know, mm -hmm. how, what scientists are actually discovering just now is you know, the world, space, isn't actually empty, you know, it's full of elements, you know, this whole quantum world is discovering, you know, those phenomenons of quantum entanglement, how particles can, can interact, uh, you know, from one another, uh, you know, at the distance, you know, all this is so fascinating, well, consciousness, you know, as it turns out, you know, in the material world, the, the way we see it, it's not real. You know, it's it, it's basically <coughs> the creation of of our mind. You know, the electrons in, in our mind, you know, create this projection and the screen in our mind. So, anyway, with with all that, you know, uh, I, I think I got the proof that I wanted. I think I got the evidence I wanted, and and for those of um, the viewers who may be of, of, of a similar um, um, similar uh, characteristics, I think would be um, very useful to, for example, watch um, videos um, uh, by Greg Braden. I'll, I'll send you the links, uh, and yes, you can put it down in the description. Um, and, uh, and basically, you know, self-love, self-love. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I'm not going to focus, obviously, on 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 my specific person. Uh, I I think my journey um, over the past few months has changed from the pursuit of my specific person uh, to a pursuit of my own self love. To be perfectly honest, and I don't really feel like I need to get my specific person back anymore i i basically you know i want her back yes but i don't need her back you know because um i'm perfectly happy on my own as i as i am and you know the the, the proof that law of attraction works is is that you know um, i've already i've already had successful manifestations like like I mentioned before, the pay rise at work, which had manifested almost instantly some couple of months ago. Uh, there were other things and plenty of signs. Obviously, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but there's been plenty, plenty going on, and I'm super excited. Uh, but at the same time, I just, you know, I just feel very good, and I feel very relaxed about it, because uh, it will come when it's, when it comes, when the time is right, and as Neville says, uh, you know, um, every manifestation has its right um, time. Oh, point that's right. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it feels great Beautiful. to be where I am just now. Uh, you know, some days I, I, I have this moment of, of this super, super intense, uh, super warm energy just filling my heart out of nowhere as if as if you know as if something super um super happy super um, um was happening to me as if my specific person was with me at that point um and i basically try and live the small things just act them out live in the end um and you know, it's it's been great. It's been great. So um, I yeah. can't complain. Beautiful. 
Um, Humphrey, oh, I'll put, I'm going to put your your interview I did with you down below as well. All, all the people in here that I've interviewed, I will link the interviews because some some people will want to listen to more of you. So we will do that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that's great. That's great. Okay, yeah. well, thanks, thank thanks you, thank you, Enrique. You've got your hand up. Yes, uh, I I wanted to to say. Can you listen to me? Yes. yes. Uh, I just want to say. Um, um, final thought um, <clears throat> that I forgot to say before. I, I think uh, what it has worked for me is working on, on three things, uh, basically, in order for manifestation to come so, or for feeling better. Yep. So I, w I, will, I would love to share that. Is first, we have to work in our pain. Uh, yep. We have, uh, everybody have, has, um, talk about self-love meditations and ono pono pono, but also love everybody. I mean, really try to feel love and, and try to every, every day love anyone, anyone on the street, mm -hmm. on, on anyone who you come in contact with, and really focus on, on dissolving the pain. That's, that's without, without that, nothing will come, nothing will happen, nothing will change. And the other thing is, the blaming blaming is so important to get rid of blaming and and the best solution for that or the best the best um, technique is or really understand is everyone is you push out mm -hmm. but really 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 feel it i mean not just read it not just um think you understand it but really feel it and the the moment you really get into your your yourself you stop blaming mm. and then you can start healing and the most difficult for me and, and the last session we had um we talked about it is time framing or the our time concept of of things when should happen yeah it's so hard uh, it, or it was so hard let's say that <laughs> um because we have we want everything now and then anxiety comes and we want everything now and, and our, our mind trick us to say that it's not working it's not working yeah. so the solution for that is for me is uh, being in a giving mode as my friend from india said uh, i don't recall her name um Ankita. yes be in try to be in a giving mode mm -hmm. because when you you start being in a giving mode you you all of a sudden you're in a receiving mode but when also when you're in a giving mode you forget about everything you forget about time you forget about manifestations mm -hmm. you forget about everything and yep. it's the best way to let go and let go is very important for the people because i once felt but like many people are feeling now, is let go is not the same as not caring. And that is very, very important to, to reassure that letting go is trust, letting go is have real faith, really letting go is have confidence. It will come and it's coming. Just enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey. I, I, I want, really wanted to share this. Lovely. Lovely. Nicely put. What a w nice way to um, tie that all up nice and simple, Enrique. Well done. Thanks. Jennifer, did you want to say something? You had your hand up then? Well, I wanted to say a little something about, um, and a couple of the people mentioned it, working on the pain, focusing yes. on dissolving it. I think it's important not to push that away. Like if you start to feel, for me, it was loneliness, extreme loneliness. Yep. If, if I start to feel that, and even like last night, I felt it a little bit. I'll just be honest. Yeah. Um, I felt it and I had to, okay, I'm so thankful. I had the wherewithal in my brain at this point to say, okay, I feel loneliness. Why do I feel loneliness? Yep. And I hit it head on. Just, okay, you're feeling lonely, but what's, what's the real truth here? I yep. am loved. I am secure. It, but it was like I had to recognize it. Don't just push it away. Yeah. And and just try to own it for a minute and then let it go. Yeah, I Does agree. That it's a great way to describe it. It's like you let it pass through your emotional right. body. 
Right. Yeah. Exactly. Lo lovely. And then you can move on. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. it happens, the speed of that over time when you learn all this, it yes. happens quicker. What used to yes. knock you out and put you exactly. in bed and you spent the whole weekend exactly. in bed, you yes. do, it, you do yes. it in half an hour. Then you do it in 15 yes. minutes. It yes. speeds up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Fabulous. And what a great example. Yes. Excellent. Lovely. Oh, wow. This was even better than I had prepaid. <laughs> Yeah, great. I learned something from everybody. I, don't know oh, if I could me, but... see some of you guys taking notes when other people <laughs> were talking. I thought, how cute! It's like a little school school session mm -hmm. today. Beautiful. Yep. Oh, look, so 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 grateful you guys have come on. I do want to do this more often. I think this is such an exciting thing. Doing it rather than just—I mean, the one-on-one -on -one interviews will continue, and mm -hmm. they're always great. But this forum is something I want to do more regularly because you guys bounce off each other and you remember mm -hmm. things and it's, it's extremely fun for me too. So thank you for being here. Humphrey, I'll let you speak too. Cause you got your hand up to finish us off. You've got your hand up. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. uh, well, I, um, I've obviously uh, mentioned about signs. Yes. And I've only just noticed uh, Enrique, uh, my friend, uh, <laughs> you, your surname is the same as my specific person's, as it turns out. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> she's a little bit, she's a little bit um, um, better looking than you. Uh, has a little bit more hair, <laughs> but you no, know, <laughs> it's a good start. Oh my gosh! Um, Humphrey, Enrique is your birds before land today. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a very, very nice bird, Enrique. Oh, gee, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I am going to upload this today because I don't think I'll be able to wait till tomorrow morning. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's night time in London now. It's about I don't know, 5.36 p.m., but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload it now because it was just, this is great. Love it, love it, love it. So wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. And every single one of you that I asked came, and um, it was just the most perfect, perfect group. And I think the viewers are going to be so inspired by you. It is so exciting. So there might be some, um, some of you starting YouTube channels this week, I think. <laughs> 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 you're getting you're getting so good at this stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity that you've given. Oh, Thank my you. pleasure, love always. My pleasure and um yeah, we'll do another one. I'm going to, you know, think of doing another one in the next couple of weeks, you know, not too close to Christmas because I know a lot of people celebrate Christmas or those of you that don't celebrate Christmas have got end of the year stuff with kids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so we'll do it early in December. Um, but yeah, to be continued, that, that's what, uh, I think that's what we'll call this series to be continued. <laughs> now YouTube is going to have competition with Netflix. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that, wouldn't that make, wouldn't this make a good Netflix series? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Teaching yeah. people how to do self-love. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's right. Beautiful. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm thank going you. to. You want to say goodbye? Just unmute yourself and say goodbye to the viewers. Bye. 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 Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Everybody. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Stay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Lovely. Bye -bye. <laughs> Everybody stay on. I'm just going to stop the recording and then we can just say bye amongst ourselves. Yeah.